Good evening, people. Good evening. Bit of music about the news. Welcome to our webinar. And uh, as always, we'll wait a few moments for everyone to join us. So welcome. Uh, as you can see, we're going to be talking about using the news in the classroom. And uh, please let us know where you're joining us from. Um, I'll put on some music. We got some news music. That's not too loud, is it? No, it's quite. Too soft. Yeah. Good evening, Sylvia. Good evening. I like the evenings now because they're funnier, even in England. We change over the clocks, go change it uh, on Sunday. Is that the same in Britain? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think America did it a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Good evening from Lausanne, Swiss Romande. Wow. Good evening, Roberto. Mm -hmm. Good evening, everyone. We're talking about news in the classroom, using news in the classroom this evening. And I'm joined by Rebecca. And uh, we'll just wait for a few more people to join, maybe give it a three or four minutes, and then we'll start. So go grab yourself a coffee or a tea, a glass of water. It should be tea because it's five o'clock where I am. Oh, yes. However, I've got um, water. High tea. So please let us know where you are, where you're joining us from. And uh, I'm in Naples, as usual. Beautiful day here in Naples, <laughs> spring day. Which... Uh, I know because my allergies are telling me it's spring. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually very nice in Yorkshire. Yeah, yeah. A lovely spring day. Nice. Okay. Famous song about the news. See if you recognise this. Anyone who wants to put this song in the chat if you recognize what it's called or who it's by anyone know who sings this song who's singing now It's from a probably oh John Lennon Ooh. singing yeah I think everyone will get the band now I did think it was the them Beatles, yes yes well done Rosanna and Patrizia well done yeah John Lennon singing yes although Paul McCartney I think does the bridge in this song. Just uh, wait a little bit longer to let more people join and then we'll get going with our webinar about using news in the classroom. Let us know too in the chat, even now, if you've used news in the classroom before, if you've used news websites, if you've listened to things, if you've shown things on TV or video. Mm. 
Amelia says yes sometimes. Yep. Good. You've got to be careful about the news these days, I think, you know, mm -mm. depressing. Let me see. Uh, Paul McCartney singing now. On the way downstairs in blanket off. Looking up, I know it's a cloud late. I'm a coat, grab my hat. Welcome again, everyone. Let us know where you're from or where you are. I hey. do. You need to let Cammy one of the hints provided. Oh. Um, in fact, in the maturita exam, often the students uh, have to comment on something about the news. Yeah, mm -hmm. it can be very useful. Okay, let's continue our theme of having a Marvin Gaye song for every <laughs> every theme. Every webinar. Do. I think we should just do do webinars about Marvin Gaye songs. <laughs> It is relevant, though. Okay, maybe one more minute and uh, we'll start the webinar. To bring some love here today. We don't need to escalate. War is not the answer. Wise words. <clears throat> I'm curious for everyone in Italy this evening. What was the temperature earlier today? In Naples, I think it got up to about 18 or 19. Oh, really? Yeah. But it's still quite cold at night. Really spring in the air. Yeah. Here today, it was 18 degrees. Oh, same. There's warm enough in Sicily. Oh, well, that is beautiful in Sicily. I can imagine, Rosanna. Okay, I think people are joining us. Oh, no. How come it's warmer in Milan than it is in Naples? That's not fair. Global warming. It's only 13 at the moment here. I think we're coming up to a rainy weekend. I think we skipped the news and gone straight to the weather report. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What can I say in English? Okay, yeah, the news. <laughs> 15 degrees in Trieste. Mm. Mm, nice. Okay, shall we start? Okay, and uh, just, let's start moving through. Okay. So we welcome everyone to our webinar. And uh, you know Rebecca from our last few webinars. And uh, we're going to be talking about using the news in the classroom, a webinar that uh, Rebecca and I have uh, produced. Okay. As always, you'll be receiving a certificate of participation and a webinar handout in the next few days. So don't worry, everything you see here that's useful and uh, more, a lot of websites that I um, went through and chose that'll be useful uh, with extra activities. We've got a lot of handouts that are available, um, or sorry, worksheets that you can print out um, that go together with the activities we're going to do. So if you don't receive that in a few days, then uh, just email us that formation, okay? And uh, that'll get to you as soon as possible, okay? Okay, guys, um, let's just begin. So um, okay. let me just put myself down there. Okay, um, as I'm sure you know, in positive and negative sense, the news is inescapable. It really surrounds us on TVs, car radio, phones, computers, newspapers, and magazines. Okay? Um, it's really never been as important as it is now. Okay? And, uh, you know, never really as easy. Okay? It is obvious that uh, 
most of the international news is in English. Obviously, there's great news providers in Italian as well, but uh, I think you'll see that if you want a real range and hear it firsthand, it's generally coming out in English. Okay? And so exposing students to these news sources in English will really allow them to widen their knowledge of the world as it happens and also um, you know, promote their English as well. Okay? Um, I asked before while we're waiting for people, but uh, have you ever used the news in your English classes? So let us know how you've used it, if you've used it, and uh, what sort of activities did you do? Okay. I would imagine there's a few people that have been, uh, you know, maybe have some uh, reading, things like this, maybe some listening. Okay. I mean, it's obviously we've got to be a little careful about what we choose because it's, uh, you know, it's not, 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 not positive at any time, certainly in the past two or three years. Okay? Mm -hmm. But, you know, it is what people are talking about. Okay? Ooh, to revise tenses. Tenses would be good, yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's a whole other issue, yeah, about that I was thinking about, like um, news headlines. Okay? To read news headlines is sort of almost another language in English. Mm -hmm. okay? Use of the infinitive for the future, use of uh, um, past participles in, without the passive, okay? without the verb to be in the passive, things like this. Okay? Um, I think uh, it can really... Um, help people's writing to sort of try to write like a journalist sometimes. Mm -hmm. okay? Most definitely. Uh, to get to the point straight away. Okay? Introduce a new topic new to topic. And Great for uh, things like brainstorming, stuff like that, really good. Okay. Civic education too, exactly. Mm -hmm. okay? yeah. I mean, the news is just history in real time, you know. Okay? Anyway, as always, we'll start with some objectives. So at the end of this webinar, you should be able to use a variety of activities to exploit news material for development of skills and language. Um, Rebecca, do you want to do that? Plan speaking and writing activities based on current events and news stories. And Rebecca's going to be showing us a little bit of stuff at the end or towards yeah. the end about uh, fake news, a real, um, you know, something that's become a big hot topic in the last few years. Okay. Anyway, um, one good idea I thought would be to make a TV news report. Okay? Um, this is something that uh, you'll see that uh, they've been doing it uh, for kids in the BBC and they've even presented some on the website. But uh, I think it's a great idea that kids can get involved in. Okay? Make a news bulletin that students can plan, script, and even act, okay? And even they could film and post to social media if they want. Obviously, you know, they need to be uh, keen to do that themselves. But I think, uh, you know, if they produce it, even if they just film it for themselves, it would be good fun. Okay? I thought a few topics it could be about. It could be about a current news story, okay, the war in Ukraine, the uh, local Italian news or even sports. Okay? Could be even an invented story. Okay? So the students make up a story. It could even be suggested by the teacher. Okay. Aliens land in Rome, okay. or even a story about the school. That is, they could interview people in the school, the, the headmaster, the, the science teacher, something like this, okay, about a new project or a, an excursion that they've done. They could interview students about it. Okay. Um, I think it would really be interesting to get these uh, students involved in uh, investigating these things themselves in English producing it in English, okay? Tell us um, what sort of news stories you could give your students to research, okay? So obviously some might be a bit too heavy or a bit too serious for students to talk about, depending on the age, okay? Um, what sort of ideas could you think of, okay? Um, I thought they could uh, divide it into parts, okay? So this is when they script it. Obviously they could do part of this, they could do all of it, okay? Usually how news stories work in, uh, in the media is that the news anchor presents the story with the important facts. Then they throw to a reporter on the location, you know, often by a satellite feed, okay, um, who presents or who either present, tells, uh, 
news anchor about the story. And then often that reporter talks to a person, interviews a person on the scene. Okay? Uh, or could also be a news personality, for example, the president okay? or a, the head of police or something like this, or maybe even a witness. Okay? That could be a um, great idea. Okay? Hmm. So we do have a worksheet here. Okay? So that will be in the handout. Okay? And uh, there's a good thing from uh, presented here from a um, famous news reporter, the BBC news reporter, and uh, he's going to tell us a little bit about how to write a news script. This could be a really good way of introducing this topic, maybe even some listening activities about this. He's going to talk about the three W's of journalism and the three C's of news writing. Okay? So we'll just watch this for a minute. Hello again. Now, once a journalist has gathered all the ingredients they need to produce their report, um, it's time to start writing. And this is where the fun starts. If you're writing for television or radio, your words are going to be read out loud. So you'll need to write a script, which might include clips of audio or video and make it pretty conversational. If you're writing a text-based story for online, think about how the words and the photos will appear on the screen. Think about the impact that the piece is going to have when you look at it. But before you start writing anything, ask yourself the most important question of all. What is the main point of the story. If you're not sure about that, tell the story to a friend. Uh, what's the first thing you're going to say to them about the story? Because that will give you a hint as to what the beginning of the report should be. The middle of the report contains the best of your interviews. So review all of your material, think about the best answers, which is the most interesting opinion, which quotation would balance it maybe. Uh, and you'll also need to plan an ending to the report. How's it going to end? Think about the final thought you want to leave your audience with. So you already know about the five W's of news gathering. I now want you to think about the three C's of news writing. And the C's are as follows. To be clear, to be concise, and to be correct. Let's go over those. To be clear, well, to write it as if you were telling the story to one person. Use simple language that everyone will understand. And try not to use a long word if there's a perfectly good short word that does the same job. That's a good guy. Concise. That means short. Keep it short. Keep it, a, keep it as brief as possible. If you make your report too long, the audience might lose interest and switch off. So stick to the key facts rather than overloading the story with information. And lastly, Correct, that's the third C. Be sure to get your facts right, and not just the facts. Get your grammar right, get your punctuation right. It's also about being correct in every way, factually and in your use of language. Don't forget that. You can't just copy things word for word from somewhere else. You can't copy other people's work. You have to be honest, and you have to spell out where the information came from. As we've said, truth and accuracy are two of the BBC's basic news values. Check out the masterclasses for more help. Good luck with it all. The writing is great fun. I like doing it. Um, enjoy yourselves. Okay, I think it's a uh, great little thing, and there's a lot more information on uh, the Young Reporters, uh, the BBC Young Reporters, which uh, got, he talks about different aspects of that. Okay, um, The handout there will bring you through those, um, uh, the, the five Ws. And then it'll go down to some things about the reporter on location and then the reporter's interview. So do you remember what the five W's of journalism were? Okay. Great things for the students in any case. Okay. The five w, uh, w words. Okay. Who, what, when, where, and why. And then the three C's of news writing were... Be clear, concise, and correct. I think a really good uh, piece of advice there by him was uh, don't use a long word when a short word will do the same thing. I think this is something that uh, a lot of the words uh, in, in a lot of the short words in English often come from the Anglo Saxon part of English, okay, whereas the longer words often come from the sort of, uh, uh, well, the, the, the Romance language, the Latin side of English, okay. Um, 
I think by choosing the short words, they're really expanding their vocabulary, particularly mm-hmm. sort of informal language. Okay, I think it's uh, as as uh, someone said in the chat just there, the Sylvia, uh, yeah. precise <laughs> is often quite difficult. And I think it is really good. It'll if you're doing a uh, essay or an article for the first certificate exam, um, but even the B1 or the C1 exams, I think it's really going to be useful to try and get to the main point of the issue. Okay, I always tell my students that when they're writing to, to tell me the objective, important issues before you start giving me your own opinions because I want to know what you're giving me your opinion about before you actually what your opinion is. Okay? I think it's always good advice. Okay? We've got two suggestions of technologies as the topic that okay. could be used for the news report. Yep. Yeah, certainly. It is ever changing. So definitely okay. useful. I think uh, Rebecca's going to take over now with a bit of information about fake news. Okay. Yeah. So this is the description of fake news according to Wikipedia. So fake news is false or misleading information presented as news. It has the aim of damaging the reputation of a person or entity, which can also be called slander, or making money through advertising revenue. The term was first used, surprisingly, in the 1890s, when sensational reports in newspapers were very common. Oh. However, it doesn't have a fixed definition. So it has been applied more broadly to include any type of false information, including unintentional and unconscious mechanisms, and also by high profile individuals to apply to any news unfavorable to that personal. Mm, I wonder who they're talking about there. Mm, I know. Furthermore, disinformation is an insidious type that involves spreading false information with harmful intent. So everybody's seen some of that at some point. And is sometimes generated and propagated by hostile foreign actors, particularly during elections. Yeah, look, I think uh, being able to recognise fake fake news is really going to help your students, not just in an English sense, but uh, in general. I mean, you know, whatever your opinion on politics, I don't think anyone really wants false information getting out. There are some definitions of fake news, which include satirical articles misinterpreted as genuine, and also articles that employ sensationalist or clickbait headlines that are not supported in the text. So these are used simply to grab our attention and send us to something else. Because of this diversity of types of false news, recent researchers are beginning to favor information disorder, not quite as a more neutral and informative term. Okay, so let's just move on a moment. Okay, we've got a video here that, uh, Rebecca found, okay? Yes, I'm um, going to put the link in the chat. Yeah, yes. and uh, I'll just switch my uh, screen share so that we can actually watch that, okay? I think uh, this one will be quite useful too for people that are, um, to, to do a bit of listening, it has some different accents in there. Be a mm-hmm. little careful that the accents at some stages actually fool the uh the automatic subtitles so it might be best to yes. listen rather than uh, read but i will keep the subtitles on but just be a little bit skeptical about them um just can you see that page uh the the youtube page yep, yep. okay i'll start that now okay fake news fake not folk <laughs> we think it's a problem I think fake news is a problem because it can influence how people make decisions. It leaves me feeling like I don't know who to believe. And it worries me that people are growing up misinformed. And if we're misinformed, how can we understand the world around us? I think it's a problem because it leads to confusion. 
and we begin to mistrust all new sources. But what exactly is it? And how do we spot it? Fake news is lies and propaganda told for a political or commercial purpose which deploys digital technology, social media, new networks to go viral, to reach around the world and influence millions of people very, very quickly. Fake news is one of those phrases of the moment, but essentially we're talking about news stories, information that people are deliberately trying to distort for political advantage or commercial advantage, for example, trying to get profit or make a profit out of a situation. So what about news that's just wrong, like when someone's just made a mistake? Mistakes can be made. Journalists sometimes make mistakes too. Or sometimes you might be reading a story and the headline could be misleading. Or a photo in that story could have been changed in some way. It might even have been changed to make you laugh, to make you want to share it. These stories we wouldn't necessarily call fake news, but they are misleading in some ways. So a fake or false story tell us something is real when it's actually not. What about when someone tells us something is fake or false when it's actually real and true? We need to be very careful about the misuse of the phrase fake news. If you're a politician who wants to close down debate, then you might use the phrase fake news because you don't want people to ask questions about something uncomfortable. And that's a legitimate area for democratic inquiry. So it's really important that we're clear about what fake news does and doesn't mean. Not really confused. I'm feeling confused, right? There's all these words, fake news, hoaxes, spin. But in the end, just be aware that not everything you see online is completely true. It might be helpful to think of it, not just in black and white terms, but there's lots of different ways that a story might be misleading or inaccurate, it might be spin, and in all of these situations it's helpful to step back and just ask yourself, is this likely to be true, does this feel right, before you go on and share it on social media and pass that story along. Again, another video there from uh, the um, uh, BBC uh, website, Wait, just for a moment. Um, I think there's a lot of resources there, and I've linked to that in the uh, in the handout. Okay. Um, Rebecca, do you want to continue? This yes. is the worksheet that she's done. Um, a couple of the questions from the worksheet we'll put on here, so feel free to answer us in the chat about these. Okay. So let's see who was listening. News okay. is a problem because it can. Mm -hmm. People's decisions. Yeah. Okay, Sylvia was paying attention. Brilliant. Often a story isn't fake news, but rather it is. <clears throat> Again, Sylvia, well done. Who would use the term? fake news to avoid answering a tricky question? Surely no one. No, most definitely not. He doesn't have hair please. that goes like... No, no names, please. No names. <laughs> <laughs> and... Politicians, maybe. I would say politicians, certainly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Before sharing a story on social media, what should you do? Obviously, we're doing a little, you know, a little bit more difficult way. We've given you the questions after the listening, okay? But uh, you know, you could give your students this uh, this handout before they actually do that, okay? Yes, well done, Maria. Check it's not fake. Think about it. Um, 
double check its content, how detailed it is. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. And there is also the key in the handout too. Yes. Yeah. In the handout, I put the answers to these questions too. Okay. Be careful that you print out the correct one for your class. Okay. As an example of this, um, Rebecca found three headlines that have uh, gone throughout the, the web. Um, see if you can spot which, one moment, which of the following headlines are genuine. Okay. First one, Rebecca. Minister to deputies reel in women stranded on waterborne unicorn. Sounds legitimate. Unicorns, you see them everywhere in the water. You do, yeah. Woman murders roommate for sending too many Candy Crush requests. Yeah. Possible. Could be justified, maybe. Mm. <laughs> and a train left 25 seconds early in Japan. And the company wants everyone to know it's really, really sorry. Okay, so tell us in the chat which one of these you think. I believe there's two of them are true and one yes. of them is false. One of them is fake news. Okay. Which one? Okay, let us know. Okay. Three and two. So let us know which one is. Uh, yeah, sorry, I, I put in the question which one is genuine. Maybe it might be easier to identify which one is fake okay so the number you're writing should be maybe the one that is fake mm. okay seems a lot of people of three. three one is fake oh you've done it mm. i think it's always good when uh, people are choosing you know there's a fair bit of choice not everyone mm -hmm. says one okay so let's go on okay. i feel like we need a drum roll so let's see, okay. Minnesota deputies reel in women stranded on waterborne unicorn. Okay, I couldn't find the actual one, but this is the same story, okay. Mm -hmm. Probably after Japanese train departs 20 seconds early. And a woman murders college roommate for tending, sending too many Candy Crush requests. Which one is fake? Okay, there was no woman murdered for this, okay. Not really. Anyway, okay. To reel in is when you pull something back to a place using a rope, or in yes, this instance, yes. it was likely a rope. So you use your strength to reel. Yeah, often when you're fishing, connected. for example, if you catch a big fish and you're pulling it in like that, okay, yeah, we say to reel in, okay. Um, a little bit like the, the man is doing down here, okay, to the women on the unicorn. So this one, uh, the unicorn one is true. The Japanese train okay, is true, <laughs> believably, okay. And I hope they ask for a refund, these people, okay, 20 seconds early, my God, okay. Um, and uh, but there was no woman they uh, murdered. But that was a real uh, headline that went around the web, okay. Mm -hmm. So... Could be a really fun activity to do to get these uh, students to, to make up, uh, you know, take some unbelievable news. You can often find these by, you know, Googling things like um, interesting news, strange news, okay, unusual news, okay, and maybe adding one of their own. So, you know, it, you know, it would need to be maybe not too extreme. Okay? I mean, I thought the unicorn one would be extreme, but... Uh, mm. That was the real one, okay? Anyway, let's continue. So um, Rebecca's made this worksheet, okay? Yeah, so obviously fake news isn't a positive, but as teachers, it can be used to our advantage. They can be used for discussion among your students, like we did with you guys, get them to give their own opinion, have a discussion on what they think is the correct news article and what is actually mm. fake news. The headlines can be used to practice speculating. They're using the modal verbs. It could be, it might be, maybe they have done this, which is a key skill 
well, the speaking exams from the B1 yeah, through to the C2. Yeah. Certainly, yeah, we looked at that a bit in our um, speaking preparation webinar a while ago. Okay. The language used in fake news may be more colloquial, which can therefore build your students' vocabulary. Mm, yeah, this is, as we were saying before, like uh, you know, well-written news, uh, well-written newspapers that are generally quite concise, and uh, that's obviously mimicked in fake news. Mm -hmm. And as Josh mentioned, you could get your students to practice their persuasive writing and get them to come up with a fake news article. Yeah, I think it'd be good fun. And uh, as long as they don't post it, as long as, you know, please don't tell. We don't want people. any responsibility. Yeah, we didn't tell you to do this, okay? But, uh, you know, as long as they're labelling it with fake news, I don't think it's a problem, okay? Um, just to finish off, I thought there was a fun activity that we could do. Um, this is something I found on the web. Uh, it's called Good News, Bad News. And I'll show you how to do it. And then maybe Rebecca and I will have a try. Okay? We'll see how successful it is. Okay? What you would do, you get two students to stand in front of the class. So maybe choose some ones who are confident. Okay? Obviously, they could do this individually before as well. In fact, it might be best if they do it individually before, okay? But the idea, it should be quite spontaneous, okay? One of them starts with some good news, okay? Not necessarily news, but something that, like in English, we'd say, oh, the good news is, okay? So the good news is that this morning I found 20 euros, okay? The other counters with bad news that they base on that. So they don't hear this. This is sort of... Um, uh, how can I say, uh, improvised, okay? Well, the bad news is that it was fake at the 20 euros, okay? Then the first student, the first student always has to talk about the good news. So follows on from the bad news. Well, good news is that it was a fake made by Banksy. So someone offered me 10,000 euros for it, okay? This dialogue continues, you know, perhaps occasionally the teacher can uh, come in uh, if it's ending too soon, if there's no great ideas, okay? they could even swap roles halfway through so the teacher could take one over and then throw it back to the student who was doing, for example, bad news, now starts doing the good news. Okay? Um, uh, I think, again, it's a great exercise for speaking. Okay? It really lets you um, uh, practice this turn-taking, listening, responding, okay? Um, I think you could have a lot of fun with that, okay? Um, Rebecca, are you up for it, okay? Yes, I'm ready. Do you want to go good news or bad news? Mm, Why don't you start bad with news. good news? Are you bad? Yeah. Okay. okay, let me see. Let's say the good news is that it's going to be a beautiful day, a beautiful sunny day tomorrow. The bad news is you have to work in an office. Ah, uh, well, the good news is that uh, I love my office and uh, it overlooks the sea. And, uh, you know, I'll see everyone having fun at the beach. And uh, maybe in my lunch break, I can go down and uh, have a swim at the beach. The bad news is. Everybody at the beach was invited to a party, but they didn't invite you. Well, the good news is that I'll have the beach all to myself tomorrow then during my lunch break. The bad news is you'll be on your own. <laughs> the good news <laughs> is that uh, uh, I... I forgot my swimming costume, so it might be better I'm alone tomorrow on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to start with a good news one? I think it might, might be best if we end that one. <laughs> yes. Um, most of it. Um, let me think. The good news is tomorrow is payday. 
bad news is that uh, I have a lot of debts to pay off. Okay? So all my money is going to go into, into my debts. The good news is that it will mean you are cautious with your money. Bad news is that I really am cautious with my money and I'll probably spend it on the way home. Hmm. The good news is you got a bonus for working so hard. Bad news is that will lift me into the next tax bracket and now I'm going to have to spend and I'm going to lose even more money to tax. I think I'm better at doing the bad news. <laughs> I know. Um, but the good news is you will be contributing to your country's economy. Bad news is the politicians are wasting all my money. They, they're voting for pay rises for themselves. Um. I think we might have to end that one there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, as, uh, who was it? Sorry, Sylvia said in the chat, I think it uh, really could be a launch pad for a debate as well. Okay. Definitely, yeah. Okay. The more the students so, interact, the better. Yeah. As you can see, I mean, we're struggling with it in English, so, you know, it's, it's a quite an advanced thing. But, uh, I mean... What you could also do is uh, even do it in a written sense that the students could, uh, you know, put up some, um, you could even continue it over, you know, one day could be good news day, one day could be bad news day, okay, and you could do it as homework, okay, so the next day they have to respond to the, to the good news that there was there, so you choose the best one. And that becomes the good news of the day. And then all the students have to do write the bad news in response to that. Okay? So it doesn't have to be this sort of spontaneous thing too. It could be just like a couple of sentences for homework. And I guess you could maybe even keep that going for, um, you know, a week or something like that, maybe even longer, just by choosing the best one from the class for each day that continues, but then getting everyone's ideas. Okay? I think... Uh, could be a fun activity, whether it's speaking or writing, okay? Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's certainly uh, they don't have to be funny. They don't have to be um, necessarily perfect responses telling a story, but I think it uh, really keeps you on your toes, as we'd say. Definitely, okay? yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, let's just finishing off. I've got some conclusions here. Okay. I think encouraging students to interact with news sources in English can really help improve their level of English. Okay. So some topics might just be, I mean, it might not even be what you consider news. You know, are they interested in Premier League football? In that case, get them to look at the newspapers online, okay, or football websites, and they can report some matches. Okay. Are they interested in the latest Batman movie? I'm sure they can find some reviews and mm -hmm. uh, talk about how it's being reviewed, an interview with the star, okay, things like this, okay, on to things like the war. Okay. Um, one interesting thing could be is how Italian events or Italian politics, I'm not saying they're really going to be interested in Italian politics, but they might know the figures, the issues that are happening, particularly if they're in, uh, in high school. And uh, you can see that, you know, how it's actually portrayed from abroad, okay? So remember, you know, uh, uh, two years ago, obviously, Italy was in the news with, uh, with coronavirus a lot, okay? And that was, uh, you know, Italy was making front pages around the world, okay? Um, luckily, we're out of that at the moment, okay? But, uh, you know, that sort of thing it can be really interesting for, I've found for students to get, um, something, uh, an outsider's look on Italian politics or Italian news, okay? Rebecca, do you want to do that one? Yeah. 
there are also lots of great exercises in textbooks, news vocabulary, headline vocabulary, reported speech, which we use often when we're telling a story, and the narrative tenses. So the past perfect, simple, and the continuous tenses too, which need to be formed correctly, which is why we never recommend writing a story in the Cambridge exams. Um, but you could also supplement them with some real news stories from today's news sites just to make it a bit more relatable. Yeah, I think, uh, who was it that uh, Sylvia agreed with me in the, um, the chat? And uh, I think it's always great for, to, as I think it's, if there's one theme of these webinars, it's really to get the students involved with what they're interested in. We're trying to choose topics that interest them, but even within the topics, let them choose the content, okay? particularly with uh, social media and, well, well, you know, the internet as it is. There's so much availability of uh, these choice for the students. So let them choose what they want to do. Okay? Um, and finally, uh, you know, why not uh, leading on from something we did quite a while ago um, before Christmas, I think it was, uh, when we were looking at uh, some writing, we had the emoji story. Why see if they could summarise a contemporary news story into emojis? Okay. even if they have to draw the emojis on the on the board, okay. Um, then other students have to guess what it is. Okay, same could be done with mime. Okay, the other thing mm -hmm. you could do also is a student has to read a brief story, and the uh, other student has to act it out. Okay, that could be fun as well. Okay, um, or even you could uh, have a YouTube story, uh, turn down the the sound. Okay, and the students have to write the, the, the story to go along with it. Okay? Um, again, all of these things, you know, you can adapt them in any sort of way. Yeah. As someone asked, uh, what websites do I recommend? I, particularly for this one, I've given uh, quite a range of websites. There's a few, uh, the, the websites I've suggested, there's divided into some activities that you can do, some actual news sites okay, that you can use. And a lot of these, there's a really good website that I've recommended. I can't remember what it's called, but it's uh, it, it divides news stories into levels. So you can go for, you know, the low level students. It'll put it in quite simple language, middle and high level students. Okay. And it'll give, it, it updates almost every day. Okay. So there's a lot of those things. Um, uh, you got to be a little careful with paywalls and uh, what you can access for free, but uh, a lot of websites, particularly the BBC, um, the Guardian website, and some mm -hmm. other newspapers particularly, and uh, uh, you'll find that most of those have uh, almost all of the content for free. Okay? And uh, there are, I've also um, included some uh, websites that have sort of Italian stories in English, so it could be even be something about your your region, your city. Okay. Anyway, I think that's sort of wrapping us up. Um, as always, we ask you for some suggestions about future um, uh, website for future seminar. Uh, sorry, webinars. Okay, write them in the chat, okay, and we'll take note of them. Um, we did uh, come up with this idea because someone suggested. Mm -hmm. or a few weeks ago, which I think this is as close as we really want to get to with uh, war in these webinars, but it's still, uh, you know, it could be touched on. Okay. And uh, as always, we thank you a lot for your attention. Okay, You receive a certificate of participation and please contact us at formazione at mlaworld.com if you don't receive it in the next week. Okay, As always, we repeat, there's a handout with a lot of worksheets, activities, uh, all of the useful language that we've used and a lot extra. So if you don't get that, please let us know. Okay? Um, someone in the question and answer, uh, Simon asked, what, which sites do you suggest for the news? Um, as mm -hmm. I said, uh, you know, you can use the BBC, particularly the BBC mm -hmm. has many different parts where we can actually... Uh, 
uh, look at the look at different levels. It's got news for kids. Okay, it's got short, uh, simplified news. It's got news listening things like this. Okay. Um, and finally, uh, in two weeks, our next webinar will be obviously on Easter in the English classroom. Okay, so just before Easter, before we go on the Easter break, we will have this webinar about Easter and some activities. Okay, um, I think we're even going to have a recipe. Oh, yes. Possibly. Yes, a recipe for hot cross buns. Yep. I may even show some. Yeah, so make sure you bring chocolate okay, to the um to the okay. webinar. Okay, and we'll all be munching on chocolate. Mm, thank you. Now, okay, uh, webinar in two weeks. Okay. So thank you very much, everyone. Okay. Um I know Rebecca's um writing. I'm making notes, notes, I okay. promise. Yep. And uh, you can sign up for this, the Easter webinar the same way as you signed up for this one. It will be available, I think, probably starting from tomorrow on the website. Okay. Um, if you have any problems, always just write to us in format too. Okay. Thanks again, everyone. Okay. And uh, I will uh, see you in two weeks. Okay. Me too. Okay. Bye, everyone. Thanks Bye. for joining us. Bye. Have a good evening. Bye. Bye. -bye.